In the previous series, we saw how our main character moved to another world along with the class, where everyone got cool abilities except him, where everyone looked up to him, since he only had the skill of evaluation, which was, in the opinion of others, useless in battle, but our hero proved many times that he could stand up for himself. Subsequently, all of them were sent to the forest to fight monsters, where a serious opponent appeared in the way of the heroes. Well now, let's continue our story. The clash between the red armored bear and the heroes continues. Mito points his sharp sword at it and then immediately attacks it, and in the meantime, the bear attacks back by opening its huge maw. The bear misses Mito, and using this chance, Mito dodges and makes an impressive cut on the bear's arm. But still, it is not enough as the bear's hide was very tough. At the same moment, Nagasho asks Mito to step aside, meanwhile starting to use his fire magic, which goes straight into the bear. This sets it on fire, causing the bear to roar in fire. And Nagasho smiling and looking at the bear, was sure that it could not withstand the fire. But that wasn't the end of it. So Mito and the girls prepare for another attack, as the bear is clearly furious after Nagasho's fiery attack. His eyes get even redder, and Nagasho can't understand why he's still standing on his feet. But Mito asks everyone to stay calm, and says that Nagasho's attack worked and the fire has obviously hurt this bear a lot, so it has become much slower. Mito looks at the bear, and asks the girls to hurry up because if the three of them attack it, they will overpower it. The girls were a little excited, but they were ready for this battle, so they all started attacking the bear at the same time. But at the same time, they were being watched by a demon who thought it was only a matter of time. The demon's name was Delphi's, and he was a skilled assassin. Delphi's believes that the armored bear will not defeat them, as the heroes have an amazing speed of development, and they are also very calm. This young man in particular stands out. Taking out his knife, Delphi's had originally planned to do a little recon, but his plans have changed, so he'll finish them all off right there. Meanwhile, Mito delivers a crushing attack on the bear, making the bear have blood everywhere. And then with a final sword attack, Mito pierces that bear. And looking at the guys with a crazy look, Delphi says that in this world, after killing an enemy, you can never relax. But just as suddenly, he notices a strange feeling. And then a knife is held to his neck. Remember how it was in the first chapter? Of course, it's our Shinjo. Only he can sneak up on his victim so quietly without them noticing. And Delphi's didn't understand how Shinjo could approach him so quietly either. Shinjo with burning red eyes, holding the knife to this demon's neck asks him to remember to be vigilant before he wants to kill someone. The demon drops the knife and puts his hands up while Shinjo holds the knife at his neck. Delphi's turns to Shinjo and says he'll remember his words, but still can't believe Shinjo caught him off guard. So Delphi's has to come up with some plan to escape. But just as suddenly, with one swipe of his knife, Shinjo slashes Delphi's legs so he can't escape. The demon falls to the ground and starts screaming, but Shinjo tells him to be quieter, as it will be problematic if Mito and his friends notice them. Shinjo wants to ask demon some questions, and after he answers them, Shinjo will let demon go. But the demon is perplexed about him, answering to some human. But Shinjo just says, Shadow from another world. And the demon realizes what this kid is talking about. And Shinjo realizes that the creepy aura that night came from this demon. But he still couldn't track Delphi's. So Shinjo had no choice but to use Mito as bait. And the demon was confused by the fact that Shinjo knew about him from the beginning. Shinjo needed information about this world. After all, he doesn't know much about it since he came from another world. But Demon smirks and thinks that Shinjo is crazy for thinking he would tell him anything. And then, the Demon begins to feel a terrible pain. Shinjo stands on top of Demon and asks him to be more cooperative, since it would be better for him if Demon told him the details. But it seems this Demon is not to be trifled with. He yells at him to underestimate him, and then purple liquid starts flowing out of his mouth, and then his eyes start bleeding. Shinjo was shocked that this Demon had suicide poison, and most likely this poison was needed to not say anything unnecessary to others. Sighing, Shinjo thinks there's going to be a lot of trouble from the demon army. And then the stats window comes up. Shinjo looks at the stats window 
But at the same time behind our guy was Kenzaki asking Shinjo about is this person dead? And Shinjo looks at her and says the name, Kenzaki, and then asks how much she's seen. Kenzaki looks at the corpse of this demon and says that she only saw it fall down. That's all. Shinjo reports that the demon was an assassin from the Demon King's army who tried to kill Mito and the boys. The bear and the lizard that attacked Nagasho and her friends were his puppets. That's when Kenzaki realized that this demon was trying to kill them. And naturally, the Demon King's army came to get the hero candidates killed. And Kenzaki agrees with Shinjo's opinion. But still Kenzaki doesn't understand how Shinjo noticed this demon. She starts to speculate about something, asking about something that she thinks only Shinjo knew about this demon. Shinjo, knowing that there is no point in hiding the truth, informs Kenzaki that in their home world, he was an assassin, which is why he sensed a fellow assassin nearby. And this news shocks Kenzaki, because she doesn't understand what kind of assassinations we're talking about, thinking that Shinjo is probably joking. Shinjo doesn't care whether she believes him or not, but the fact that there is a corpse is a fact that he killed him. Shinjo then asks Kenzaki not to tell anyone about what she saw today. After all, the class is already on edge because of Hashimoto's injury. Kenzaki agrees and says that Shinjo is surprisingly kind, not understanding why he would be sensitive to the feelings of his classmates. And it turns out to be simple. Unlike Shinjo, the boys aren't used to fighting. The scene changes and we see all the classmates gathered around Hashimoto. One of the students turns out to have a healing skill. Her name is Hano Shirori. She uses her skill to heal Hashimoto of her serious wounds, to which the classmates were very surprised. Narumi is very worried about Hashimoto and asks if she will be okay. Hano informs her that she will be fine and in an hour, she will be completely healthy, to which Narumi was very happy. And while everyone praises each other, Shinjo stands by the tree while Kanzaki glares at him. Then Leonora and Night Guy arrive, asking for their attention. The students begin to resent where they've been all this time when they needed their help so badly. Night Guy says that they were there to watch over them, but Narumi doesn't understand, then why didn't they come to their aid? Answering that question, Night Guy informs that it wouldn't be training then if we help you every time. Mito was also unhappy with the situation because Hashimoto was in danger and could have died, and he didn't understand why they didn't come to help. Night Guy says that in battle every life is at risk, and from now on, they will only have to fight such battles, so students shouldn't whine over such trivialities. Mito standing in front of Night Guy says that you deceived us because you said that there are only weak monsters in the forest, but in the end, they were attacked by such a strong bear. Then Leonora intervenes in the conversation and says that this is most likely the work of a demon killer, to which the students were surprised. Leonora goes on to say that there have never been strong monsters in the forest, and most likely the demons were evaluating your strength in this way. Night Gaius was sure that this demon is still hiding in the forest and Leonora agrees with it, so it is necessary to strengthen security as well as to strengthen training, because otherwise, all the heroes will be killed like flies. And this news the students were not very happy, because they are already working at the limit of their abilities. So Mito intervenes in the conversation, saying that it's ridiculous, because it was their first fight and everyone is worried. But Leonora doesn't care, because they have to go through with it anyway, or they'll all die. And then Erisher appears on the scene, angry because they called them here, and now they're giving orders. And when he approaches Leonora, Night Guy stands in front of him and angrily looks at the students and tells them all that they are just pawns in Leonora's hands. So don't even think about disobeying Mrs. Leonora. And this news is even more shocking to everyone. Erisher was ready to give Night Guy a lesson, but Mito intervened and told Erisher to calm down, which Erisher was not very happy about. But Mito tries to change his mind, because if they go against them, they'll make an entire state their enemy, and he doesn't think they'll stand up to it. And Night Guy was glad that at least some of his students realized their situation. But in any case, they are very valuable pawns for them, and as long as they listen, no one will get hurt. But as suddenly, Erisher attacks Night Guy, because he doesn't care if there's an entire state against them. So he activates his explosion ability against Night Guy, which causes a massive explosion. In this thick smoke, 
Erisher is happy that he succeeded, but suddenly Night Guy appears and hits him with his fist, causing Erisher to fly away and fall to the ground. He looks at the students and says, That's exactly what you can do, implying that they are still weak, so from tomorrow they will have a tough training, and then leaves with Leonora. And you know, I kind of feel like there's something wrong with this Night Guy and Leonora, like they have some kind of plan that's going to make all the students feel bad afterward. What do you think? What on earth are they up to? Write about it in the comments. Erisher then stands up and says with full determination in his eyes that he will definitely finish that old bastard off. The day after the combat practice, we see the students, Leonora and Steady, standing near a building. Steady tells the students that for today, he'll be in charge of their training. And as we learn, Steady was a monster researcher. And then looking at the students, Steady wonders if someone was injured yesterday. Did they all recover in time? Hashimoto raises her hand and says that she was injured, but thanks to Hano's healing, she's feeling better. And then points his finger at Erisher and says that the jerk is fine too. And Steady was very happy that among the powers given was healing, thus making young Hano blush. Then, Steady began to explain the nature of the training. He informs everyone that this is his research center, and today they will all be fighting monsters. Mito looks at Steady and asks, So this place is full of monsters? Steady adjusts her glasses and opens the doors, telling everyone that it would be easiest for them all to look once to understand everything. Once inside, the students see that the cages were filled with goblins, Lizard Val, and a huge red ogre that made the girls break out in a cold sweat. Steady proudly walks down the hallway, and says it's his collection of monsters to experiment on. And then Leonora, still with her eyes closed and a smile, says that Steady's research center is also used as a field training ground for soldiers. Steady also says that through battles, he can gather data on different monsters. And just like that, the next day the practice began, where Nagasho entered the arena and fought against a huge red ogre. And as usual, Shinjo was watching the practice, since he was the only one who wasn't allowed to practice, and he was surprised that his classmates were surprisingly calm, considering that they were thrown into the battlefield without consent. But that was most likely because of yesterday's experience. Still, there was still fear in their movements. Meanwhile, Nagasho falls to the ground and then stands in front of the Red Ogre. The Red Ogre stands embittered at this girl, so Mito excitedly informs Steady that this monster is too dangerous. But Steady just smiles and says that it's okay and he's been ordered to be tougher on them. And then looks at Nagasho and says that a hero candidate who has received a divine gift would never lose to such a weak monster. So at that very moment, Nagasho loses his temper and raises a huge fireball and throws it at the ogre, setting it on fire and causing massive damage. Steady looking at this scene says to Mito, that they are all capable of doing this, but you are only hindered by your fear and hesitation. And with the increase in divine blessing level, there's even a chance of getting another divine blessing. And then Shinjo comes on stage, saying he has some business to attend to. Mito turns around with Steady and surprisingly asks Shinjo what he wants. Shinjo uses his appraisal skill to say that he discovered another divine blessing from Mito. And that divine blessing was a lethal attack on a level 1 monster. After hearing this, Mito asks Steady San to enter the arena next. Upon entering the arena, Mito is still facing the Red Ogre just like Nagasho. Mito summons his sword defending against evil, as well as activating a new blessing, a deadly attack on the monster. And then Mito notices that the Red Ogre has begun to fear him, which surprises Mito. But Mito apologizes to the monster, but there will be no mercy and then attacks the Red Ogre. The Ogre tries to defend himself, but Mito just chops off his arm, and the Red Ogre starts screaming. And then Mito chops off the Red Ogre's head, which rolls on the ground. And everyone was shocked and happy to see it, congratulating Mito for such a brilliant victory. Shinjo looking at this sight, thinks that with strength like Mito's, even an armored bear won't be a problem. But what's even more important is that if his grade level increases, Shinjo will be able to receive a new blessing. And then Shinjo notices that another classmate had his blessing level increased, and it was the bully Erisher, who also had very good characteristics. But Shinjo decides not to tell Erisher about it. Shinjo thinks that standard methods won't work in this world, and it seems he needs training too, 
since his blessing level might increase. Then late one night, when everyone was asleep, the boys were in Arashi's room. As it turned out, Erisher was planning to kill Night Gaius, capture Leonora, and beat it out of her to find a way for them to get back to their world. And Narumi was a little puzzled by this, but it seemed like Erisher was very serious, and everyone in the room was excited about it, because if they succeeded, they could return home, and if they killed Leonora, they would not have to fear being summoned to this world. After this news, Erisher asked Narumi to join them, because Narumi is tired of their antics too. Narumi grits his teeth and thinks that he just wants to go home, but he doesn't want to kill anyone. But still remembering the last incident where Hashimoto almost died, Narumi agrees to Arashi's plan to let Night Guy meet his doom. The next day, the students practiced as usual to achieve the desired results, each of them using their own abilities as well as practicing sword fighting. The best of them of course was Mido, who now had two blessings. Shinjo standing by the tree and watching Mido, speaks of Mido's great zeal to become better. Mido turns around at Shinjo's words and smilingly tells him that he is still too weak, so he needs to find a way to become strong as soon as possible. But Shinjo doesn't understand this eagerness to get stronger. After all, Mido is already stronger than more than half of the knights in the country. Mido of course knows that he is quite strong now, but he still lacks the strength to defeat Night Guy, and he doesn't like it, so he has to get as strong as he can to protect all of them, because otherwise, he won't be satisfied. Shinjo then asks Mido about how he feels about Leonora, and what he thinks of her. Mido, practicing with his sword, says he thinks we're all really just pawns in her game, but he doesn't think Gaius was lying when he said he wouldn't hurt them if they all followed his orders. And Shinjo doesn't seem to like that outcome, because if Leonora orders them to fight to the death against the Demon King, they'll go for it. Mito with a determined look says right, since it's already decided. But Mito says that he will be the only one to fight the Demon King, becoming the country's hero. And in exchange, Mito will try to bargain a better life for all his classmates. Shinjo thinks it's a good plan but Leonora may not agree to it. But Mito puts his sword to his chest and says that's why he's waving it around, so she'll recognize him. Then Leonora and Night Guy interrupt their conversation, telling them all that they did well in today's training. Leonora runs up to Steady, and she tells him that while they're gone, the hero candidates will be in his care, and Steady says she can count on him. Behind them stood Nagasho, who wonders, are you guys going somewhere? Leonora smiles sweetly and says that's right. And for the time being, Steady will be your handler, and then leaves the training ground with Night Guy. And as the two leave, Steady starts smiling for some reason. The scene changes, and we see a horse-drawn carriage driven by Night Guy. He asks Leonora if all is well, but Leonora doesn't understand what he means. Then Night Guy tells her to stop playing dumb, because Eresy is definitely up to something. He thinks about the fact that Erisher will probably try to rebel against them. He then asks Leonora what she plans to do. Leonora looks out the window and says that she wonders what Erisher will do, but that she wants to turn a blind eye for now. Night Gaius doesn't mind not paying attention to it yet, but still Erisher is a candidate for heroes, even if he is still weak, but he can team up with other heroes. But Leonora smilingly tells Night Gaius that they can't defeat her, it's just impossible, and then says that it is even beneficial for them, as she wanted to gradually begin to show them where they belong in this world. And then with a creepy aura and yellow eyes tells him that the rebellion is a great excuse to break their claws, and then looking out the window again, tells him there's another suspicious person. Should we leave her alone? Night falls, and we see Shinjo fighting against the shaft lizard. Shinjo jumps up, pulls out his dagger and throws it at the lizard, whereupon the dagger strikes the target and kills it. Upon landing, Shinjo looks at the lizard and says that this monster he was able to kill in 13 seconds, and then uses the score skill. He sees all of his stats, and since he came to this world, Shinjo has risen a lot in his stats. Shinjo also believes that his level has risen due to the fact that he killed that demon last time. But the question is, how do you put that into action? Shinjo turns around and sees a red ogre attacking him, but the ogre misses because Shinjo dodged it in time. Shinjo is surprised that there is an ogre here, so he pulls out his knives and throws them at the red ogre. But all three knives only fly away from him, as the ogre is pretty tough. 
Meanwhile, when Ogre tries to hit Shinjo, our hero thinks it's even better, as it's the perfect opportunity to experiment. In that very second, Shinjo activates his weakness mapping skill, and then notices a bright blue mark on his neck. So quickly jumping into the air, Shinjo pulls out his knife and aims directly at Ogre's weak spot. Subsequently, the knife reaches the monster's neck and he falls dead. And that's when Shinjo realized how the weakness mapping skill actually works. Even though this power is pretty good, it's still not enough and he won't last that long in this world. So clenching his fist, Shinjo with burning red eyes says that he needs to become stronger. The scene changes and we see a crowd of goblins rushing towards Shinju. Shinju activates the assessment skill to see the goblin's weaknesses. He throws daggers at them, which fall right into their weak spots, after which they all fall dead, taking knives from goblin bodies. Shinju believes that it is not surprising that the weak points of goblins were the brain and heart. Therefore, Shinju is thinking about looking for other types of monsters to test his skill. But suddenly, Shinji hears a man coming here, and we see the shadow of a silhouette of a man walking towards Shinju. Besides, he was with a flashlight. As it turned out, it was Kenzaki Rin who was calling out to Shinju. Shinju turns around and asks Kenzaki about what she's doing here. Kenzaki comes closer to Shinju through these corpses and says that she was looking for him everywhere and searched everywhere, and then, just in case, decided to check the forest and did not lose. Shinja sighs and tells Kanzaki to return to the dorm, as it is dangerous in the forest at night. But the outraged Kanzaki says that she should say that. Shinja says that he is used to night restriction, but Kanzaki is not, especially monsters are stronger at night. But for Kanzaki, these are just excuses, especially since she doesn't understand what Shinju is doing here. And Shinju just reports that he is experimenting with a new blessing. But Kenzaki clearly does not understand what new blessing is in question. And then he asks Kenzaki if she remembers Steady's words, that if you level up, then there is a chance to get a second blessing. Kenzaki is a little puzzled, but asks Shinju what new blessing has he received. But Shinju is reluctant to share such information. And then Kenzaki gets angry, because she was worried for nothing and came here. Shinju turns around and asks her why you were worried, and even about me. Kenzaki suddenly starts to get embarrassed and says that's not what she meant. But as a result, Shinja asks Kenzaki to go back to his room, as he wants to experiment a little more. And Kenzaki says that she will go with him. But then, their attention is attracted, and they see smoke coming from the city. In this place full of fire, there were goblins, lizards, as well as ogres who attacked the students. Everyone was running and escaping from the fire but one of the ogres was in the way of Hano, who thought she was going to die. But right there, Mito appears and saves her from this evil monster. And then he asks if she's okay? Hano says that everything is fine and thanks Mito for saving them. But they are already surrounded by a crowd of goblins, and Mito is already tired of fighting them off, since there is no end to them. At the same time, Nagase was outraged that the monsters invaded them, because she slept so well. Erisi, standing behind her, says that they don't have time to chat, because first they need to get rid of these bastards. By the way, did you also not notice how Erisi turned from a hateful and stupid character, became quite interesting, and he is not so infuriating anymore? Do you have the same impression? Write about it in the comments. Later, Shinjo and the Cossacks ran towards their burning dormitory, and it looks like the fight with the monsters was in full swing. Narumi was very glad that these two were here and that no one was hurt. Shinja doesn't understand what happened here because they went for a walk for a couple of minutes. But Narumi himself does not understand what is going on here because he just escaped from a fire and here is a horde of monsters. And then Shinja notices that these methods very much resemble the methods of people and for sure there is a puppeteer hiding somewhere here so you need to track him down and catch him as soon as possible. And then, Steedy tells Shinju that he thinks right. Shinju looks at Steedy, and now she understands everything, where all these monsters came from. After all, all these monsters were from the research center. Steedy was very pleased with Shinju's insight, and he reports that everything is correct, but it was necessary to improve the monsters with drugs so that they were suitable for his plan. 
Shinju angrily asks him what he benefits from the fact that the candidates for heroes will be dead. Steady, smiling, says that he was ordered by his superiors, and he must fulfill it at the cost of his own life, although in fact, he does not hold a grudge against them, but all of them will have to die. Kenzaki wonders if this order came from Leonora. Steady says this fox has nothing to do with it, because the one who was the customer was the demon king himself. And if he obeys the order, Steady will be allowed to continue his research. And Shinju maliciously looking at this scientist says that he is rotten to the very bones. But Steady just laughs and says that he can't know the whole mysterious essence of monsters while he remains human. Well, here and at this interesting moment, we will finish the third part of this story. If you want to see part 4, let's get 500 likes on this video, and also write the word ogre so that I understand what you have watched to the end. Well, that's it for us. See you again and bye bye.